the first thing we want to do to create this project is to cut 12 pieces of lightweight chipboard and they're seven and a quarter tall and four and a half wide. Yes, four and a half wide. Sorry, let me correct that. Seven and three quarters tall, four and a half wide. And then on the top, you're going to measure over. Of course, it's going to be square, so you're going to measure from the corner over one inch and from the corner down one inch and make yourself little marks and then just cut them off with your scissors. And then in the center, I punched a hole with the crocodile and I brought the hole in two and a quarter inches from each side and uh, three eighths down from the top. Then I, after I created all 12 tag shapes, I, let me pull these out so you can see, I picked a corresponding color in the My Colors. Now most of what I have on the background, the base, I'm calling this the base color. Most of them are my colors. I did have a couple occasions where I didn't have the right one for my colors, and I will list in the description box all the colors that I used from my colors and when I substituted with something else. And on the substitutions, I can't really tell you um, who it was made by or what its color name is because they're things I've had in my stash forever, and I really don't remember. But um, for instance, on January, then each one on the front is going to be the same, and they will be different on the backs, and we'll go through those as we get to them. But the pocket on the front of each one will hold the calendar, and in January, I've just um, matted it on red artisan cardstock because that's the other color that's dominant in it. Um, and that will sit down in this pocket. And the pockets are three and a half by five and a half, I believe. Let me double check. Yes, three and a half by five and a half. And they're scored. I'm catching on that edge. They're scored at one half inch on both sides and along the bottom. And then mitered. And we'll make a couple of them together in case it's your first one. Well, here's one I haven't glued down yet scored it on both of the short sides and one long side and then you'll um, miter your corners and you'll angle this top just to cut down some of the bulk and they'll be attached to the tag and then you can pick whatever um, print from the collection that you want to put on here but I use the um, envelope punch board the large one for this uh, here it is And I cut my design paper that's going to go on the pocket. Let me find. Here is February. I've got all of mine laid out by month. I went through every one, put my bases down. Then I cut out all my pieces. And here's my pocket piece. What I did was I cut this to just shy of four and a half and at two and seven eighths so that it would mat on here perfectly. And then I put both of them together, and I lined this, the print up at the top. And I put both of them together in the punch board with the left end, left edge. Let me get it where I can make sure you can see it. With the left edge at two and a quarter right here. Oops. I want to show you how I did it and do it right. Put it in here at two and a quarter and line it up just like you want it to be when you glue it together. I just wanted a faint edge to show. Line it up like that and then punch through both of them and when you take it out then you'll have a perfect little edge on those. So this is February. Let me put this back. And this this is the journaling spot for January. I'm going to give you some more information on that but I just want to show you on February. This is one that I did not have the right color um, of the my colors to go along with this. I really wanted the one called Grape and I'll show you the difference. Here's the design paper and it, it, it works okay because there's some of this lighter color in it but I really wanted the Grape. So if you're going to make this with me it 
would behoove you if you have the chance to buy the grape. That's plum. Concord jam. Purple velvet. This one is deep purple. I thought it was called grape, but it's not. Deep purple. Now doesn't that look beautiful with it? I really like that better. So, this is just all 118 of the My Colors. I made some of these uh, color swatch booklets for myself and some of the design team, and it just really comes in handy. So that will be my pocket for February. Now, let's see, I've got March. I've got all of them ready, and I've got another stack over here. I have this first six months on my left side, and the it's a lot of pieces. But anyway, my thinking on this is, because it's not numbered or dated, well, it has the days of the week, but there's no months on here, so you can make it for any year you want. But if you want to put small numbers like the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on and so forth, you can certainly do that, which I probably will cut out some small numbers on my um, Cricut Maker. But instead of writing in the uh, areas because they're so small, what I'm going to do is put a, um, God, what do they call them? Oh, is the enamel dots. Jeez, oh, I'm lost for words. Like um, my grandson's birthday is on the 12th, so whatever day ends up the 12th, I would put an enamel dot there. My granddaughter's is on the 2nd, so I'd put an enamel dot on the 2nd. And then on the back of here, or here, I could make a legend and put the 2nd is Libby's birthday, the 12th is Donald's. Like that. And that way, because these are, these are so small, you really can't put a lot in them. So that would be the way I would do it. Just another thought for you in case you're interested. If you're not, okay. <laughs> I keep getting the caught on those little edges in there. need to put tape on those, I think. So that goes in there, and that goes in there. And then on the back, I just used um, one of the cut-aparts here, and I put the gray artisan behind it and a couple of the little tags. And then on the back, I used this frame, and this is a Tim Holtz frame that I had in my stash. And you actually can, let me find something will fit under there. You actually can put a photo in here. It'll slide all the way down. And I used another one of the tags and put it on the uh, gray artisan. But I'm not, I'm, I used a little bit of Tammy's lace on, on here and some Baker's twine. And I thought it turned out real pretty and a few enam enamel dots there. But, um... I'm not going to use any more of these just because of the thickness. I don't want to have too much bulk in the whole thing because if I end up making a box to put them in, the box is going to be huge. So, you know, you have an option of maybe putting them on a ring, tie them all together with ribbons or baker's twine, or make a display box. You know, there's, there's a lot of options and ways to display them. But that is how the project is going to evolve. If I use any more frames, it won't be these just because of the thickness. I really like them, and it turned out really, really pretty, but the, the thickness is just going to give me too much bulk. So that's where I'm at with this at this point in time. And once you get your first eyelet or your first hole poked in the center, just take, oops, take the next one and put it back behind it, line it up and just make you a little circle with a pen or a pencil and then you'll know where to punch the next one you won't have to measure each one so that's just a little cheaters way there or an easy way oops i'll put that back in there and i mean that in there put this back all right that's where i'm at at this point in time oh and i do have another little thing i made out of scraps that i'm going to add to this one i just had some scraps and i cut a piece to fit this from her cut apart sheet and then I cut a second piece and I'm going to make it so it opens like a little book 
just with the gray artisan and this will be a photo mat in here and then I'm going to put a little strip of this glitter trim down at the bottom just to be pretty so that's just another another way to use up your scraps I save everything I know a lot of people say throw them away but I don't throw nothing out I, I can always find a use for it somewhere okay that's it for now I'm going to put the pockets on all of mine and get them to this point just on the front and then I'll come back and we'll do all the backs together okay guys we are going to work on this tutorial again for the hop this is the 12 tags now I have all 12 of mine pretty much done but I want to share with you let me lay them aside they're kind of bulky here uh, January I think we already looked at uh, I did add a photo mat in there now remember this is um, the journaling spot then I have a photo mat and I made a little another journaling spot with one of the tags and it just opens like that it's very basic but uh, we can make one together if you like and then the calendar is in here and my thinking is to use the enamel dots and put dots on the days once you have the one two three four five and so on in there then put a dot on the days that you want to remember and on the back side you can write the day like the third or the fourth and whose birthday or anniversary it is and remember it that way the squares are very small so I thought that would be a better way just put a little enamel dot or you could punch out a heart or a star whatever method you might want to use well come on get past that there we go gotta get past that little flap there on the first couple I did not use tape inside and I'll show you the difference um, when you glue this down at the bottom if you put a piece of scotch tape over that edge it helps your calendar slide down a whole lot all the way to the bottom and I didn't do it I don't think on January or February but I did the rest of the months so you'll see how much easier it slides and then on the back uh, if you remember I put this photo frame back here that was um, out of a Tim Holtz collection I had in my stash and it put so much bulk in it that I decided I better not use it anymore my, my box was going to get gigantic so there's January here is February and I haven't put any fibers in the top yet I will do that later but they all follow the same basic method with the calendar and the see February's catching because I didn't tape the bottom you kind of have to bend it a little bit and I did add some doilies to them just for some more color and I used some dies that I had in, in a stamp just to kind of embellish it a little bit so that this back wasn't so plain so the calendar goes in then the little journaling spot and I think I will make some more um, photo mats to stick in each one just to give more photo space and on the back of this one I have a large photo and I'll show you how I made this little envelope super simple so we'll do that let me set that aside so I remember I have to show you that here's March same basic premise on the front I did put one of the uh, journaling or not journaling um, border strips down here and I cut out the pot of gold that was on the design paper and I had a die that makes a rainbow and I just cut out four colors and put it kind of ran it off the page so there's that one and then this one has a photo mat in it and that's fixed down but you can add more to it uh, more colors and things in there if you want okay and, and the yeah this needs more photo mats in it on the back I used one of the uh, cut out pieces and a couple of the tags and a photo mat here so that is March April what did I put in April I've forgotten it's been a while it just says just for you they're pretty the colors are just gorgeous in these papers all of her new design collections are beautiful every one of them and then on the back another large photo mat with uh, two little places to tuck your photo behind so that's April 
And then we have May. And I have another doily in here with a tag. Another tag here. Oops. And a couple of the little tickets out of the collection there. And this goes back in. And on the back I have three little photos with another one of her cut aparts there. This could actually be a journaling and two photos, however you wish to do it. So that's May. And then June we're going to do together because it has a fold out page and I want to show you how to do that. I have it also on October and I'll show you. Okay, so I'm not going to pull each one of these out. This is um, July. No. Which one? Oh, they're out of order. This is July. And it's all about fireworks, and there's two tags in there. I didn't want to cover this up. I thought that was too pretty. And on the back, then, we have, I've added some stars. I just used a little punch I had in my stash and put some Nouveau Glaze on top of it. So that's July. This is, uh, here's August. I got them out of order. There's August. Got a little tuck spot here in the front with some tickets and a tag. And then there's the back of that one. They're, they're very similar on the back. I wanted to keep the backs pretty flat so that I don't get so much dimension that the box is going to be huge. Then here is September. So pretty. With all the little tags. See the puppy dog on that one? It's cute. Okay, so there's that have a large photo on the back of that with one of the cut parts and two of the little tickets. So that's September. Now here's October. I have one of the cut parts. I don't know what I put behind here. I can't remember. It's been so long since I did. Oh, I have a witch in there. Isn't she cute? Can't remember what I did. There's that. And then on the back is the fold-out page. Now it's held with two magnets. And it opens like this. And it opens this way. And this way. And this way to make a four-page spread. Isn't that cute? You need to work it a few times to make it lay down flat. But it makes a four-page spread like that just makes a little pinwheel and it just folds back up on itself and catches with the magnets. So that's October. Here's November. And I put a little tag back here. Well, this one has more tags and things. Isn't that pretty? I love these colors. It goes in there. And there's the back of that one. This was one of the dies I had in my stash. And then here's December. And there's the back of that one. This is not actually a poinsettia. I just thought it was a pretty flower, so I used it. So let's make June together. So what you want to do to make that four-way pocket is you're going to need, and I've got the glimmer paper uh, let me see what color that is. I'm not sure. Let me go to my greens here. Here it is. Um, it's this one. It is called... Willow Green. That's the name of that one. That's what I used to go along with the gym. So it is seven and a half by seven and a half. And then you'll need four pieces of whatever design paper you choose. Um, I chose the green print and the rose print, and they're each uh, three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then I chose this one is Spanish moss from the um, my colors collection, and it is four by four. So that's what you need, plus two magnets. And I'm using the large basic gray. So let's 
fold this. So you're going to fold it corner for corner. Or not corner for corner, you're going to fold it straight across. I like to put it in the scoreboard to make sure it is nice and straight. And then we'll burnish it. And we'll turn it the opposite direction. corner for corner. It's a little bit stiff on this paper, but it works fine. It just makes a little extra bulk, so you wouldn't want to put this on every page. You'd end up with way too much bulk. And I'll burnish that. And then we'll do the opposite direction. scissors and just make one cut. Doesn't make any difference which straight line you're going to do. One of the straight lines, they're all the same. Each side is the same, so it doesn't make any difference. We're just going to cut up one score line. Just to the fold. to make sure that they all lay straight or right side up. Your first one can be glued down to the whole thing. But then your second one only gets glued to this corner. Let me show you. We'll glue it down. So let's do our first one. straight. Don't go over your score, but straight to your edges. Now, if your paper's directional, you want to be careful about that. Mine was on the first one. This one, it really doesn't make any difference. So, what I'm going to do is put my glue in this section here. forward like this and line it up with my other piece. I think I want it to go this way. And I'm going to line it up with my all the way to the edges and line it up with the one below. Okay, so again we're going to use this section. And I want the green one. And I'm going to bring it around so I can make sure my edges are lined up nice and straight. And then the last 
one. like mine is off just a hair. I'm going to put it up to the top like it's supposed to be and line it up with the left hand side. Now it will unwind like this. Hopefully I didn't get too much glue on it. Takes a while to get it working. I think I might have got too much glue on that one. I did. Darn it. Okay, and that's how it works. Looks like this one is just a hair too long. I can trim that off. That is my fault, and I can put an embellishment or something down there. Where am I? Blue kind of overpowered me. I'll trim that up just a hair. Just a little bit more. Now it's better. Okay. So it folds up like this and like this. And like this. So that takes care of that. Now you need magnets. It is off just a hair, but I'll put a piece of trim down there and that'll take care of that and it'll be fine. You can make it open from the top or the bottom or however. So what I'm going to glue down is this section, but I want to put a magnet under it first because I want this to hold to this. So I'm going to put a magnet back there. Actually, let me put it on the top first. It needs to be needs to be under this print and you don't have to cover it because nobody's going to see it anyway. So once you've got that one under there, and that was a positive, so let me get a negative. use two on the first one. I still think it needs two. So I would put the second one here because it's going to pop up and look nicer if it's flat. So I'm going to put the second one under this corner. 
and a negative. Right there. And that will hold it down. So there's that one. We'll stay there. Sticking to me. broke so many nails I can't hang on to nothing or can't get a hold of it. Alright, so now you need your four by four square. And we're going to center it right over the Spanish moss. Just so you have a small border. And then the Spanish moss will attach to the back. Now which way do we want it to open? That's what you need to decide. Okay. This way. This way. And this way. Okay. So we will glue it this. This will be the top. Now you can make your backer bigger if you want more than a border. I just wanted something to anchor it down with. Now I have some lace that Tammy sent me, which I'm going to put right across the bottom of this. I think it'll dress it up and make it look pretty. So I'm going to cut it right here. Not the sharpest scissors in town. Let me straighten this edge up. Make sure that's long enough. Yeah, it can be a little bit shorter. Take just a hair off. Okay. And we'll put a little. glitter going down here. And attach the lace. We'll let it sit for a while make sure it's good and attached. Okay, now you can embellish it with whatever you want. This little cat's really cute, but I don't want too much green. I'll find something to embellish it with, and then I'll come back and show you on the final tutorial what embellishments I used. But that takes care of all of the tags, and now we have to make the box to put them in. So let me cut out a few papers here, my cardstock and chipboard, and I'll be right back. Okay, to make the box, you're going to have five pieces. This one is four by five and will be the base of your box. Now, I've added the artisan green to one side of each piece of my medium weight chipboard. And I will show you how it's going to go. This will be your base in the center. And then we have two pieces that are three by five. And they will go above and below. That will make your top, well, two sides, and then these two pieces will make your other sides. That's how the box goes together. So what we want to do is take our 12 by 12 piece of artisan, get this off of here, 
and we're going to score each end. This is 5 by 12, and we're going to score one inch at each of the ends. each of these folds and get this one I like it better oops and this one okay now your three inch piece is going to go right where this will fold over that will go there. Then you will take your spacer and put it up against that piece and you will add your 5 inch piece. Then you'll put your spacer in again and you'll have room for your... no you won't. It's a bit shy. Well, let's do this then. Let's score it at three quarters. And three quarters is plenty. Thought I had it figured right, and maybe not. I should have done a dry run first, right? Okay. See what we get. Let's burnish the three quarters. Thought I had plenty for a full inch. I drew it out and it came out that way, but then when I actually do it, it's not. So go figure. Okay. Maybe I just don't need the full width of the spacer. We'll see. Oops, let's put our spacer in there. It may be wider than the, or thicker than the cardstock too. That may be the problem. Now let's see if we got room for this. I think we do. Okay, so that will go like that. We'll have our spacer in here. And I want to hold that still so I can make sure that it's going to be enough. And it looks like... Yes, I'll be okay. Okay, so let's glue these in place. And we want to get it right along the edge. We're going to put it almost to that score line. Four by five. I'll just about get as much on me as I get on the chipboard. Huh? Okay. Our spacer. And now this piece. Okay. And I've got a little trim work to do there, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. 
and then the third page. Spicer. And we'll put this one in here. That makes it perfect. Okay, I'm going to let these set up. While that is setting up, I'm going to make sure it's good and dry before I do any more with it. Then we have two other pieces that are three by four and an eighth, and I've attached the dark green artist into them as well. And we're going to score on all four sides at one inch. These pieces measure five by six and one eighth and scored at one inch on all four sides. Okay. Now, these pieces will sit right inside the score lines. And I'm going to turn it over to this side. And if it's a little tight, it's not a big issue because I'll show you. I'm going to glue it down. it up and it may be right on your score line which is okay because we've got plenty of room to wrap it with. I'm going to burnish that down. And we'll do the same thing with the other one. Okay, this one's been sitting a little bit longer. Let's trim it first. We're going to trim the corners out on this one. And just slightly below this. going to add score tape to this. Oh, where's my, there it is. bottom corners as well.
just a slight angle, not much. You don't want to cut out your corner and leave a bald spot. Hush, Roxy. Take a break here. Settle these dogs down. I'll be right back. Okay. Here's where I'm at. Took me forever to get those dogs settled down. I actually thought I had um, punched record and I hadn't, but I just did the same thing to this one. That, so you have your two pieces for the sides. So they'll line up with this gap here. They're just a little bit wider so that when this tucks in, this will fit over the edge. And they'll come together like this. And wrap around. And you'll have your box. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add glue to these bottom flaps. I left my pen out too long. And these will be <coughs> covered with design paper on the bottom, so it's not important that we have extra under there. So we're going to line that up just like so. Oops, not so close. We need a little bit of a gap so we can, because it's going to stand up right beside the other. I don't want it on top of the bottom, otherwise my album will get too tall. And I don't want it more than three, because my pockets are three and I have the uh, embellishments that kind of hang over the side and I don't want to crumple those. So there's this one. And it will go up under on this side. Just like so. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to add glue in this track in this track. Oh, before I do that, darn it. Ugh. I'll have to do that again in a minute. Actually, let me get a wet wipe and take that glue out of there. i got to step ahead of myself. I don't know if I can get it out of there. I'm not going to worry about it because this is wet. We need to add our papers to the inside first. So we have, I already have them cut and inked with black soot. Got a step ahead of myself. And I just left a small border around the edge. this off and glue this down just like when we have an album cover I just want to bring that forward now we can put this piece on here.
we'll do the same down here. Oops. Knock it over. It won't work very good. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. And then we have this piece. So I could cut that one a little bit short. I don't think it's going to be terribly noticeable. Hopefully not. If it is, I'll cut another piece and fill it in. Okay. Now we can go back where we were. Oh, let me get some uh, clothespins. This one and this one up. And set it right beside that one. Now I'm going to put glue on this flap. Same thing on this side. Put some glue in that little space. Add glue to this flap. And we'll bring this up. And this 
this around. And secure it really good. With the clothespin. I'm going to do the same thing with the last side. This is about the easiest box you'll ever make. I've made several of these before. I don't think I've ever done a tutorial on one of them. It's been a long time since I've made one like this, too. <coughs> Up. Put a clothespin on it, and the same thing on the last side. And a clothespin. Okay. I'm going to let these set up. And you can see that these actually go this way. And there's room on both sides. So they'll fit in there fine. All 12 of them will sit in there. I'm going to use this on the outside. And I'm going to wrap a ribbon around it with the bow and hang the little um, embellishment on there that Tammy sent with the craftology box that says our year because I haven't used that yet and I have two of them so I'm going to use one of them on this all right I'll be back shortly all right guys I just want to finish up this tutorial and share with you the outside of the box I did use the rose paper that I told you and I had this wide pink ribbon in my stash so I just wrapped it around and I used a little piece of uh, score tape just to anchor it underneath. It doesn't show at all. And then I tied a little bow, added some little flowers that I had in my stash. And then I cut out this R year on my Cricut because the one that uh, came with the original collection was too large. So I just cut it out of white and then I cut another circle out of the pink and put it behind it so that the letters would pop. So that's it. That is the whole thing. So. We are done. We are through. So I hope you will be at the hop. I hope you'll have a good time. You should be able to make lots of things with the paper collection because there's so, so many sheets included in one of Tammy's collections. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So I encourage you to check out everybody's design. Go to each channel and comment and just have fun. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.